I can mute it. Well, hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to Reality Realness with three S's. I am your host here, Chantel Francis, and here with my lovely co-host, we have Brazil. Brazil. <laughs> Hi, Brazil. Hi. So if this is your first time on Reality Realness, then welcome. Make sure if you're on YouTube, you subscribe right down below. This channel is all about reality TV, reality TV, and all the gossip that might go around with it. We love everything gossipy and everything reality. So we're just going to talk today about Big Brother, one of our, both of our deep obsessions. Um, and we're just going to kind of do like a little bit of a recap of the Sunday night episodes, so the most recent um, aired episode, and then maybe any spoilers. I don't know. Should we, do you think we should talk about like what happens on Wednesday? Like the, you know, the veto and all that stuff? Nah, nah. We'll try not to. Yeah. We'll do our best. best. If <laughs> we'll try to say spoiler alert, if we spoil something. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll do that. No. So the beginning of the episode, it kind of starts with like Danny. I'm, I was really annoyed with Danny for throwing this hanky vote, um, especially since like we know so hard that Janelle was trying to stay, and and Janelle didn't really have any idea how much Danny wasn't on her side, and so then she did put in that vote, and so maybe Dan, maybe Janelle was thinking like, oh my god, like maybe I could have actually got the votes or whatnot. Like I don't know. I just think like, was just mad that she did it, and then she says the confession in the confessional that she want she wanted to throw a, a pity vote or she said something like that and I was like I'm annoyed. Janelle doesn't get friggin' pity votes. Like get yeah. out of here. Right? Janelle wouldn't want a pity vote anyway. Like come on. Uh anyways, like I can't remember exactly how that 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 went down, but I just was like I wrote down pity vote from Danny and I was like annoyed like just give her an all zero like nobody votes for her like let her know at least where she was standing properly because she was being lied to the entire game and it was really frustrating yep yeah <laughs> yep i want danny to go oh my god i want danny to go i was like i started the season i was hoping i was hoping crossing my fingers and praying that davon danny and janelle would get together and just form like a strong trio and then maybe bring bailey in and i just wanted to, to be dominated by the women of the season i thought the women were going to be way better than the men but it seems as though I don't know if it's only because the women seem to be targeting women or if the challenges have just seemingly only been going to men, but women for the first three evictions have only been going out of the house. What do you think about that? And like the legacy of Big Brother, like I think that's terrible. It looks bad. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's a combination of both the challenges not going their way and them targeting women. Um, but I would put it more so on Danny and Nicole, like being okay with it. Cause they are the ones that are closer to the guys and they weren't even trying to argue with them or have any other ideas. Um, like, so. did you really need to have Kevin stay for first, first uh, episode, first week? Did he I know. need to stay for personally? I find like Kevin, Maybe I can understand, like, you know, with a person of color being the first one to go, and it, that's just not maybe the, the climate. It's not, it wouldn't be good optics for the show. So I understand him staying in that regard 100%. But for what he brings to the game, it's like the worst. Like, he is honestly the worst. And it's a very similar thing with David staying the second week. Like, he's actually bad for the game itself, bad for the people that are strategizing. And you even have Enzo at the end of this episode talking about like, yeah, David, don't strategize, just shit, sit in the back and watch. Like, it's, it's not your game, you know? I think because Tyler took David under his wing like so hard the first mm -hmm. few weeks, ended up biting him in the ass as they show. But um, I think if Tyler wasn't as invested in David, I think there's a chance David could have gone over Nicole. But, and then also with Davon wanting to, um, did yeah. not wanting to vote out a person of color. So I understand that reasoning and I do not behoove um, Davon for wanting to make that stance. Absolutely. I support that 100%. But I wish the player in David that she was making this stance for was better because I think that even 
keeping him in the game, keeping him and Kevin in the game is going to make it more difficult for Devon to get further on in the game. And so I wouldn't be surprised if both Kevin and David make it further than Devon. Well, because Devon already has trouble with like reeling it in and, you know, not messing up um, things that she says. And now she has to worry about confiding in two other people that are equally bad, if not worse. <laughs> so. Exactly. And, you know, people are pretty much outplaying her right now, which which is really unfortunate. You know, she, she she's a fan favorite going in. Um, everybody wants to see her do well. We want to see her have the win. She does sometimes get really good reads on things and gets good information. And then she just doesn't know how to do it properly. She, I think everybody in this house, well, mostly the people I'm rooting for, so like Davon, Bailey, just needs to reel it in and stop talking to people about what's going on. They need to just listen more and keep it inside because they just gossip and they just let it all out and it just ruins everything. Like when they had the discussion with Kevin and then Kevin just goes directly to Danny, just ruined the possibility of reeling Dale, David in. It just, just too, loose lips sink, as Julie Chen says, alliances, which is what David apparently did sunk some alliances. David and Kevin need to get an award for pretty much fucking up every alliance they come, <laughs> come into contact with. Exactly. Oh my gosh. They both are terrible, terrible, terrible. So at the beginning of this episode, we see um, the end of the, or the, the continuation of the head of household competition that started on Thursday. And so basically they have to roll um, three balls uh, however they want. And there's um, three holes in the middle of kind of like an incline. So it's kind of like a, like a ramp, up and down ramp, where they have to roll the balls and balls have to sit on the top of the, the ramp. And Kesar, from the beginning, he rolls multiple balls at the same time and like first try he gets two stuck in and then very quickly soon after he gets the third one in so he moves around to the next heat which i remember i was so ecstatic about i was talking on rob as a podcast after and like we ended up talking about the fact that he you know he made it on to the next round we were so close and the rounds kept going the rounds kept going and so who ends up being the second part? Does it even matter? Do we even care? I think it was um, Danny, Christmas, Kaser, Enzo. And Cody. Yeah. Wait, David was there too, no? I don't remember. He might have gotten to round two. Um, he too. Kaser, Enzo, David move on. Danny, Kevin, and Cody move on. Right. Um, and so, man, like, I just wanted almost anybody else to win other than who ended up winning. And Kaser was so strong. He had two balls in for a long time. And I already knew in advance before watching the episode that it didn't happen for Kaser. But watching it back, I was just like so disappointed because he was so darn close. Just so darn close. I know. That's and why I'm, I'm done having hope. <laughs> I'm, I really am. I'm actually throwing my hope out the window. Oh, I have one last ditch. Like, I don't know how, how things are going to play out with the veto and the renoms and all that stuff. But if Kaser manages to stay, I can hold out a little bit of hope. Yeah. If Kaser goes home at the end of this week, I think that I'm going to start rooting for the guys to win. I'm going to have to vote against Davon. I'm going to have to vote against, like, you know, want Davon and Bailey not to win anymore. Um, obviously not Kevin, not David, not even Ian. Uh, like, I'm more so going to be rooting for Franzel and Danny and all what? those guys. Because I'm just so angry that they let people get away with it. Now I want to yeah. see them just get their comeuppance for just making such a bad decision. I want to have the satisfaction of them knowing how bad their decision was. That's true. I mean... And um, um, it's almost too late now, I think, in my opinion, to without like them losing Kaser, if they do, like it's gonna be way too late, I think, to kind of get any more numbers on their side, in my opinion. Exactly, like they might have, you know, a round where they win something and maybe they'll take out, I don't know, Danny or Cody or whomever, or Nicole. Um, 
but then they don't have any sort of numbers and the other side is stacked with people that win stuff. They've won everything so far in this game. And so what makes you think that all of a sudden you're going to become the comp beast? Um, as we've probably noticed in the past seasons that the, the competitions have become more physical and more geared towards a man, a, an athletic man winning the comps at the end when before they used to be kind of mentally comps or like no, like the face morphs and stuff like that. Like they just used to be something that was a little bit more of an equalizer that t took a little bit more brain power as opposed to just like, you know, swinging off of something, even like doing the super superhero competition. Like it's still more geared for a guy because they're going to have a little bit more stamina and be able to swing faster and across these ropes and like see what's happening. And just, it just, it is what it is. And so they're going to have to. Well, I'm just going to be rooting. Well, right, right now, my winner pick is Enzo. And he is who actually won this head of household competition. So now Enzo has won a safety competition, a veto, and a head of household competition. And they are only in week four. Mm -hmm. hmm. Does a lot of people have won? Nothing. Mostly being women. Just saying. Um, it was a photo finish, though. So the photo finish was between... Who was it between? Um, it was Cody, Cody, and, Cody and Enzo, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so Kaser still wasn't even in the running there. Like, I wish that he just like took a deep breath and just just rolled that last one with purpose. He had two in, and so he didn't need to be so like flippant and just ah, like you know he could have just been a little bit more relaxed and centered. And it was the same thing that we saw the previous head of household competition where he just he didn't center himself and focus. And so I'm learning that if Casey were to ever come back into the house, he would need to have some coaching on how to not a show his cards just in general by like how he's reacting. Like he needs to reel it in a little bit more. And when he's on the line, not just throw it everything out there, like become more focused and more careful um, rather than just like tossing things at the wall and hoping that it sticks. Oh, I wish I was in the house with them. I really I do. I would, if I was in the house with them, they would have had somebody on their side. And then I could have been able to be like, no guys, we can't go at these people this way. Like they have big egos and they think that they're better than you and they're smarter than you. And they don't want anybody to tell, they don't want their parents to tell them that they're doing something wrong. We have to, we have to appeal to them in a different way. But nobody could tell them because they should. People should just want to work with them because they're legends and they're fun. Don't get me started. I'm already he did. Um, so what else happened? Uh, so yeah, Enzo wins. Blah blah blah. Everybody, everybody's happy. Obviously, Kaser is devastated. Um, and so everybody was discussing the rogue vote. And how do you feel about nobody confessing or fessing up to this rogue vote? And the fact that Danny, I don't remember if they showed it on the episode or not, but she asked Cody in advance. She, it was an episode. It was? Okay. So she asked Cody in advance if she, he would be willing to be one of two rogue votes or whatever, um, throwaway votes to pin it on potentially Bailey and Davon. What do you think about this as a tactic? And what do you think about the aftermath? Um, I think the tactic is working and I don't like that. I don't like it just because of who it is and who they're trying to pin it on. Um, and, and Cody and, um, Danny are like, say the slick six is the worst alliance ever, but they're taking shots at Bailey and Devon by doing that. I Absolutely. mean, Cody didn't, but, um, yeah, I don't know. It just doesn't well, Cody kind of is in a sense, like because well, Cody didn't do the vote. Like, oh, so okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like because he wants Davon gone next. So I mean, yeah. like six meant absolutely nothing. But then also, what's her name? Um, Dan or no? Enzo has never made it clear, even to the the um in the diary room, what why he made this vote this way, like why he did that. He doesn't. He hasn't talked about it yet. No, no, and I don't think. I mean, I don't even see his reasoning for it other than... Cause chaos and dissension? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I, I see Danny's reasoning for it, but um, I haven't figured out Enzo's yet, especially because <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't on the same page. Um, 
I don't know. One thing that I did laugh about this episode was um, <laughs> Devon having a conversation with uh, David, and she's like, ah, "I'm over it. Why are you here?" And <laughs> it's true. It's it must be really frustrating. I've played many different games with people with different level of different levels, but sometimes really strategic games, it's very frustrating to play with someone that doesn't know how to play. Like I've played poker before with someone that doesn't know how to play, and you can't work with them and you can't actually play your own game because they just do things that are wild card and these games are like trying to outsmart somebody but if they have no strategy then it's just it's just futile like there's no reason for you to be playing with them because you can't it's just all chancy and so i can understand why it must be beyond frustrating to be in a house with someone that's never watched a full season seemingly or played a full se or half a se or an episode a week like you played nothing what this was that quote that was said what which one um when uh david was like i really wish i could have watched for the first time instead of oh play yeah Be playing in it <laughs> there's so many people that would have been so, so much better in that position. We said it before on Friday that like, at this point, I would have rather have Paul in there. I would have rather had Josh in there. Oh, yeah. At least, you know, there would have been a different reasoning because Paul likes to have his own kind of army himself. And so there'd be maybe a battle between Paul and Tyler because they have similar type of desires of having to being the leader of the pack. Um, so that could have been interesting. Christmas would have gravitated directly towards Paul. Like it just might've shaken things out a little bit differently if the original cast was there. If Casey yeah. was there, you know, it would have been a big target for Casey and Tyler to be together, Josh, Christmas and and Paul to be together and then Teaser and Janelle yeah they're going to be number one hit list always but at least they would have people that they could hide behind or they can join forces with that were out in front and I think that as you said before Josh would would want to work with Janelle in like a second you know yeah I think you would eat it up absolutely so one thing I'm going to miss is having all these deep conversations that Kaser has with, you know, Devon and in general, you know, yeah. like they're talking about really important things and, you know, I know it's just a game, but Big Brother is, is a look at what's going on in society. And we didn't really enjoy what we saw, what was happening in, in season 21 and other seasons where we saw kind of the negative parts of how the people in the world interact, but seeing like Kaser, you know, have these really deep, profound moments in the house and he's still able to bring that. And I think it's really beautiful. And I'm, I'm going to miss having a little bit more depth in the relationships and the bonds that are being built, built by the people in the house. Everybody's just so like Instagram and get out, get, get out Janelle. But like he's having meaningful conversations. What did you think? Yeah, it made me cry. I cried too. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know if they're just showing more of that uh, this season um, on the episodes or... Well, I think... Just, I think he, it's Pacer in general, but... He brings that out of people, you know? Yeah, yeah, right? He asks he asks those questions. It's not... Yeah, so it's gonna... It's, it'll be sad to see him go if he does go. Yeah. Um, I'm rooting for him always, but we'll see. You never I know. Was also really irritated by the whole have-not thing. I do like how the previous have-nots choose the new have-nots. I like that. I think it's an interesting twist instead of just putting it only on the head of household. I wish people weren't allowed to volunteer, but um, yeah. when it, I, I found it annoying that everyone was just so comfortable and making like kind of jokes and lighthearted, um, you know, comments. But Danny, wait, what did she say exactly? She said, I'm coming for you. And Bailey said, swing, but don't miss. Exactly. I like, and I was like, I felt that that moment, I was like, that, this is a real, this is uh -huh. real. Uh -huh. This was no joke here. Danny, Danny has been like, was hoping that she would be able to skip her week of have not, like that, sh that someone else would volunteer. Because right now I think they're just rotating. Um, like they're doing the same four people each week, I believe. And so. now it's three because Janelle was a half not when she left. So oh, okay, or, yeah. So, so she didn't pick a fourth. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. I don't know, but I think that was I think that was real. Yeah. But like, why is everybody so freaking comfortable with making these targeting jokes? You know what I mean? I was just like, get out of here. You you guys are all feeling so damn safe. Like somebody is not safe. 
You know what I, I mean? That's the only thing I hate that Nicole got to say that to Janelle on her have not speech. And then Janelle still played it cool for the most part. So I know a lot of people were kind of giving Janelle a little bit of flack for not going at her, but she's been coming at her a little bit on, like in, in real life. Um, when she posted um, her invitation, the RSVP save the date for Francel's wedding. And it's a $300 RSVP, $3,000 RSVP. Like, what so the F? Someone pointed out that she cleverly put her Chanel bag right behind it. Yeah, and her oh God, that's bag was more out. than the invitation. I mean, I 100% saw that. I was like, in, the first thing I thought is like, oh, I wonder if it came in that cute bag. And I was like, absolutely not. That is Janelle's bag, 100%. <laughs> uh, and then I think what she say? she's like, we're the, we're the, the song of the night will be Cotton Eye Joe, no thanks. I was like, oh. <laughs> I mean, I know the song Cotton Eye Joe pretty well. Like, as I went to this art school, we did take national dances, and sometimes we there was like a folk um, like month or whatever, and so like I know a line dance, the full thing to Cotton Eye Joe. So I, I would lead it. Too. Pardon? I said I bet Nicole does too. <laughs> and then what else did you say? She was like, I could buy, I could buy the trailer Nicole lives in. Um, or she's for. Um, for less than what my monthly like maintenance or whatever, I just said something. Oh, I didn't. I didn't see that thing. But um, it was I'll find it. And then you know she's been. There was another thing that I sent you. I think that she said. Um, I can't remember right now. So yeah, I was annoyed that everybody just seems so comfortable making these targeting jokes. But I felt as though it was real between Danny and Bailey because. Something's a brewing there. Um, so since when though is Danny and Nicole like actually super good friends? They were kind of joking around with hearing Ian, I think it was in the washroom and like kind of just being all giggly girly. And I don't really see them being friends. Apparently they're really good friends outside of the house. Yeah. I don't see that. Um, they're, they're not gonna be one. Nicole fucks Danny over for a guy later this season. I mean, I think, no, I think Danny might get taken out before that. So that's what I'm saying. We'll... But I feel like Nicole will somehow still fuck her over. Okay. I'm, I'm here for it. Like good. Danny needs to get burned right now because I think that she's being, she was just such a shitty friend to Janelle. You can be friends with both of them. You could just be honest with Janelle. Just be like, listen, like I'm playing this season with Franzel. I, I just, I can't, I can't play with both of you. You guys are on the opposite ends of people. Just don't make me choose and just be transparent. Like that's all that Janelle and Casey have ever wanted is for people to be honest with them and people don't even give them that respect. And it just really irks me because I play a very similar game to Janelle and Kaser. So if somebody were ever to do that to me, I would not be as cool as a cucumber as Miss Janelle or has been. I mean, I love her digs. They may be petty, but they're petty great. <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, once Janelle sees everything that was said. Oh, um, she, I don't think she could talk to Danny ever again. Oh, no, no, no. no. I ever, would've. ever. Um, another props, uh, Janelle's daughter was doing a TikTok uh, to <laughs> WAP. I mean, I don't, I don't know if Janelle knows the, what the song WAP is talking they have about. A, they have the, um, uh, the radio version? Music. Yeah, radio version. It's still like she's talking about like, but have that ring and all that stuff. Like, yep, yeah. Um, if Janelle really knew what she was talking about, she might not be allowing her daughter <laughs> to be doing the dance. But <laughs> Cardi B retweeted it, and I'm pretty into that as well. Like Cardi Cardi B is giving Janelle some props on her Instagram. So I mean, yeah. on her Twitter. I know. I wonder. If, I wonder if Cardi B watches Big Brother. I don't think so. I heard Rihanna does. Yeah. Did I? Oh, I heard it in a, in a clip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, and Cody didn't like, like Rihanna the singer. No, Rihanna the basketball player. <laughs> Come on, Cody. Um, wow. Yes. I don't know. Maybe she watches it, but regardless, that's still pretty epic. I mean, she's still winning even though she's out of the house. Yeah, I mean, Janelle is definitely winning for sure. Um, and her, her daughter, one of her daughters had another, I think it was an Instagram story, maybe, or it was a TikTok, maybe it was a TikTok. And she talked about how 
maybe Janelle is going to do Survivor or like that she's been asked to or she's been talking about it. So, I, okay, I'm gonna put this out into the universe, okay? Because I'm obsessed with Survivor as well. I think that I would do a lot worse on Survivor than I would in Big Brother. I understand they gave a Big Brother a little bit better strategy wise. Um, Survivor is more so a numbers game with winning competitions. So all the things that I find frustrating about Big Brother is basically the game of Survivor. But I played, as you know, a couple weekends ago and I realized that I'm, I'm pretty good at it. So because it would be something that challenges me a lot, I really want to see whether or not I could get on Survivor. Do it. Now, imagine. If you played with Janelle. I played with Janelle on Big, I'm on Survivor, like season 43. Because uh. <laughs> she would just be a newbie. She'd just be yeah. like a fan. I know, and I wonder, I wonder how many would, people would know who she is. Exactly, I wouldn't tell anybody. No. No, keep it to yourself and just go up to her and be like, oh my God, I'm a super fan. Let's do this. And she would totally have your back the entire season just by you saying that. You this, have to do this. You this would this save Big Brother 22. <laughs> right? You guys could just roast them on Survivor. Like, <laughs> dude, just, uh, please do it. I'm going to try. I'm trying my best. I'm trying oh my, my best. Now, Big Brother's always been a dream of mine. And, but I, I started watching them both at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be just funnier because I think that Survivor would be harder. It would probably be the show that I would get on. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just because like I want Big Brother more. So right, right. I mean, I'm gonna do my best. I would love, hey, if you're seeing this out there, <laughs> put this into the right hands because I could be she could be me and Janelle Brazina as final one of the final three. Like I think we could make that happen. I think I would die just seeing it on TV. Dead. Like actually die. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so i'm putting it out there because anything that i've ever wanted in my life i've put it out there and it's always come back in some sort of capacity so who knows how this desire how it's going to come back to me and you heard it here first and let's see when it manifests oh my god please it's like there's not much many things that i think i want more than this right now <laughs> i know now that you're saying that, yeah, that would be pretty epic. Because <clears throat> oh. like I do that, then Nick can do Big Brother Canada, and we'd be good. Yeah. Right? When is this, when is Survivor supposed to start? Well, I believe that they've already done their casting for uh, 41 and 42. I think they already have the people it locked. I don't know if they're going to do any changing because there's been a lot of diversity initiatives that have been going on and suggesting that maybe Survivor needs to take a look at um, the people that they have, how many people, are, how many different types of people that they're representing that are non, uh, we'll say white, we'll say. Um, and so there's been a lot of initiatives and not a lot of black voices speaking. Obviously the Black Lives Matter movement has happened since they did some of the casting for season 41 and 42. So hopefully maybe they would relook and go into it and maybe shift things around. But if not, if they're kind of set on who they already have, it'd be for season 43 and 44. So n like 2023, I guess, or 2020. You know, it's a long time for people to mess up their contract and. Yeah, anything so, can happen between now and yeah, then. Yeah, anything, anything could happen. And like Janelle didn't just go on All Stars and I didn't make this plea yet. So yeah, let's just put that into the universe and just see when that's going to align. <gasps> That'd be so epic. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't even right now. <laughs> you wouldn't even be able to keep your cool. I feel like the first time you talked to her. No, I'm pretty, I'm pretty chill. <laughs> and like, I mean, I've met a lot of celebrities Janelle? in my life. Oh Pardon? my God. Is it, but Janelle? I mean, I would keep I would her cool. Fangirling so hard, like how do I not stare at her like while we're on the boat, like getting there? Like <laughs> I would be like, what the fuck? I don't think I would, because yeah, I also work as an actor, right? So I've okay. I've had to be around people that you're not you're not allowed to look at them in the eyes, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> I think I'd be able to handle it, and then fangirl in my confessionals. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And I think once you talk to her, you'd be fine. Like once Absolutely. you like solidified it, then it would be fine. But right, just, we'd just be like running the show and making fun of people that'd be like, oh, so annoying. Oh, mm -hmm. let's get rid of them. Okay, what should we do? Oh! <laughs> I would 
Yeah. 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 So this is this is it. This is happening. So back to the show <laughs> instead of like my my life goal and dream. Um, we see Kaser talking to Enzo, and they had a really good conversation. And I really do wish that. Kaser knew in the beginning better how to communicate with Enzo and that side of the house instead of like drawing the line, which I think needed to be done. But she, he also should have maybe looked at different tactics of getting in with them and seeing if they can bring him into something and maybe then attack from the inside. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, I know that she, him and Janelle love to create the divide and have the two, you know, sides fighting against each other. Like, that's their strategy. And that's a very good strategy to get further in the game. And so you're not on the bottom of the numbers if you're not part of the main alliance. I get it. I love it. It's fascinating to watch. But I think in this particular game, because it started off with Cody being the first head of household, he needed to go from the inside and destroy them from, you know, inside their own alliance. And so when Danny came and asked Janelle to come to that alliance, she should have said yes. When so I think Cody and Tyler asked her to be in one as well. Like they, she, they were asked to be in some of these alliances, probably so people can keep tabs on them, but they should have, could have also been able to keep tabs on the other people as well. And so I really wish that they had done that. And so, yes, he had a great chat with Enzo, but Enzo was just like- Enzo I said it took too long. Exactly. Exactly. Which, yeah. I wish Which that I get, that like, I, under, I get it. I get that it's hard for them to be fake and it's hard for them to, but that is also part of the game. And I think that's kind of where Kaser especially falls short. Um, and I think he's just so frustrated that he, in his head, he knows exactly what's going on and he's been right pretty much the whole season. Well, he has a better idea what's going on. Like he knows that the people that are on the outside are yeah. being picked off and, you know, whether the people that he was trying to rally up um, realize that they are next on the chopping block, they still aren't part of the main core. Like they're right. still not part, they might be part of A6, but they're not part of the main four that's calling the shots because we've talked about it before. Devon and Bailey, they've never been the one that decided who is going to be up for nominations, yeah. who is going, like, they're not in the, the power position of making these decisions. And so if you're not making these decisions, but you are with the voting with the house, someone's making those decisions that ate you. That means there's an alliance going on that you're not a part of, you know? Wait, one, one thing on the feeds that is, it's all a spoiler. <clears throat> um, Bailey said to Enzo, Cody, I forget who else. It was, I think, a few of the six, like six members. She was like, "You guys should have went with my pick. I told you to put Janelle in our alliance, and um, like over Danny, basically." And so that would have been. Bailey, it sounds like yeah, you, Bailey tried, but she didn't try very hard because she knew. Well, I thought that's another thing too. Like Bailey seemed to not want to try too hard to put their ne her neck out there for these people. Um, being uh, Janelle and Kaser, but she still halfway did it. So people are still going to be lumping them together. And so she might have just have gone all in and been on their side instead of being mad that she's getting like, what, I think Enzo was calling it their stink, their stink, or you're getting stink, their stink on you. And I'm like, A, that's also really rude. And I was yeah. like, not really down with like- That was Ian. Ian um, oh, him. it is Ian, yeah. He does oh, but, say that though. Yeah, Enzo said it, but Ian like told them about it. I'm like, yeah. come on, Ian. They said that who in his season who had the stink? They, Frank or probably yeah, I think Frank. So, mm. Ugh. I know. Ugh. I know. So yeah, I was really sad about that conversation. I thought it went well, but obviously that people are just going with the house. There's nobody that wants to stand up to the house right now. It's an easy vote. Everybody's safe if they just get out Kaser. They don't have to worry about somebody maybe disrupt disrupting their plans. They can just do everything that they want systematically. Really exciting. And Christmas, I'm so tired of Christmas thinking that this is what the audience wants. It's like, it's just gonna be a quiet week or it's just gonna be, you know, um, we don't wanna see two sides fighting. We want everybody to be like getting along. Like that's not what, and, like, no, that's not what we want. Christmas. And I think Tyler said today, he's like, said something like, um, he's like, uh, I want to make moves and make America happy or go home to my girlfriend. Like he, Tyler said that. And I'm like, okay, well then prove it. We'll see buddy. Well, Tyler is the one person right now that I think would actually make these moves because he wasn't yeah, really I shy. Tyler, Tyler's been like earning a lot of points in my book these last 
last, this last week for sure. I don't mind him, um, like, you know, compared to many of the other people in the house right now. But yeah. I really wish that when he had the thought that Janelle might be better for his game to stay, that he went along with that. Um, I he, just, could he could have. Cody even said, like, you want me to use a veto? And if, like, Tyler agreed, I bet Cody would have been like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? And I don't think Cody would have said no to him. Exactly. So. <sighs> That'd have been so great. We're all still talking about Janelle and thinking about Janelle even after she's gone. Janelle C is for real. So annoying. I mean, that takes a lot though. Like that's that's how you can tell someone's a star, right? Because when people just they got to talk about you. Um, all the major celebrities, like they have people writing about them in like magazines and following them around is because people want to know their business because they have something that people want. Like they're just like, so wow. And so it's Janelle is a star and that's why they have to be talking about her so much because if she was nothing, if she was like, who cares? Like some Joe Schmo on the street that like had no value and wasn't like gorgeous and amazing and like funny and like she wasn't perfect basically. <laughs> like they would not be talking this much about her. Like what's the point? Right? I agree. Exactly. I agree. Um, second to last thing that happened on this episode was seriously the star segment again. Like they already showed her starting to get the stars. I mean, I think it's decently cute. I wish it wasn't with Christmas because I don't care for Christmas at all. But you know, the fact that she kept on getting more stars, it's kind of a little bit funny and it could have been cuter with somebody else having that punishment. Um, but like, what do you think about the star punishment? Baby stars. I could care less, honestly. Exactly. Like, I, I don't know. Exactly. I, they, they, could have, they could have filled it with so much more that's actually going on. Well, it doesn't really go with their narrative. That's true. Yeah, they're really sticking to this one like narrative. Danny coming for Janelle and is the mastermind trying to take the, be, be the Knicks queen. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, well, we'll see how that goes. I want to see how things are edited on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. <laughs> I, yeah, because that could be – it might be a good episode, actually. If some it, of the – I think it – if things go the way I think they're going to, I think it, it'll start to get good. Well, but I mean, though, like with what they share in the episode, it might be better because new things happened. And if they uh, don't show some things like on Thursday and the following week, it will not make any sense because they would not have seen the lead up to this. So true, true, I'm true. thinking that they're going to have to show some of the real happenings that have been going on and how things have been shifting and changing. You know, yeah, um, they have to Wednesday or Thursday, one of the two. So the last thing that we'll talk about for this episode is Enzo chatting with Christmas. So Enzo chose Christmas in the safety suite competition. That's why she has this star punishment um, in order to kind of bring her in. He wants her to be his pit bull. Now, I guess that's because she's physically fit and potentially could be winning a many different competitions. Which but like funny to me because she didn't even win any on her season. They were thrown to her. I mean, I think she won one. And then this time she's only won a safety suite comp and that was... When nobody nobody else needed to get it. <laughs> no, yeah. So I'm like either she's throwing it all or... I don't think she's throwing it all. She's gotten close to think a couple times if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't know. But anyways, like she wants, he wants her to be his pit bull and I'm just like I don't he's want... already loud enough. We don't need... <laughs> exactly okay. I do not need some other loud person even though I don't remember her popping off I know they said that she pops off but I don't remember her having a, a shouting match I, I didn't really watch actually the full episodes of BB19 I mostly just listened to live feed updates right. um, because I was just I hated the season mm -hmm. so much that I couldn't bear myself to watch the feeds or watch the show because I was just so frustrated so I only listened to people talk about it um, just because that was the only way that I was able to really, really watch it. I mean, I kind of watched the full episodes, but obviously it doesn't show everything. Did she no. pop off? I think like on Elena, maybe. Oh yeah, maybe. But Elena's the I worst. Mean, most, jo I mean, Josh took the crown for popping off on the most people, but, <laughs> and Paul too. So I think just because she was associated with them, they definitely outshone her. So I don't even really remember. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. <clears throat> 
Um, so yeah, by the end of the episode, we then learn that Enzo is nominating Kaser and Kevin. Surprise, World surprise. World. And I'm I'm so annoyed with seeing Kevin's mopey face. Like, it's just so annoying. I mean, I get it, like he's upset, he doesn't want to be on the Bakker and be nominated. Like, I get it, but it's just like this like puppy doggy, like sucky, like I don't know, make you feel sorry for him. It's I get it, he's sad, but like it's just too performative, it's annoying. I don't no, like it. And it's it's it would be one thing if he was using that and capitalizing on it. Mm -hmm. But he's just like, anytime he gets some kind of valuable information or anything good comes his way, he just fucking blows it up. And I'm like, you could be, <laughs> he's, he keeps complaining he's not in alliances. No one wants him. He's just expendable. And I'm like, you're making yourself that way because of what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much everything that happened in the episode. Oh, the one thing I was wondering though, do you think that Enzo might have a little baby crush on uh, Christmas? Kind of what it seems like because okay. in, the, in the very beginning he was talking about, he's like, man, there's no, no one single in here. And then someone was like, Devon's single. And he's like, okay, Devon's single. Like, I don't know. And she's like, she loves kid or like her kid. I don't know. I, I, I think maybe... I said Christmas, but are you saying are you saying Devon? No, no, no. Um, but I'm saying he will. He in the beginning he was like, oh, there's no one single. There's no one single, and someone said Devon is. Is and Christmas he, single or no? No, but that's why they didn't name her. But I. But the fact that he said that he's he was looking for single people makes me think that yeah, he's at least. I could see him having a crush on her. Yeah, I think and she's I, very I pretty. Know, this is she yeah, she's really pretty. I, I think she's the closest to Enzo's age because she's older she, than Memphis. Yeah, which I did not know that. <laughs> right? I mean, Memphis. She looks, she looks either Memphis aged poorly or, or she looks really good for her age. I think Memphis aged poorly because. Okay. Like, well, I don't think. He, Memphis is 37, I believe. Oh, he aged poorly, yeah. I thought he was in his 40s. Like, like yeah. Like like, 40s. <laughs> he's older th than my, or younger than my younger brother, and my brother probably looks 21 you know what i mean i'm just like <laughs> okay yeah okay so yeah well christmas still regardless looks good for age but i think yeah i think you're right just the way he talks about her too he's like christmas wants, do no just, just want to bring her in you know like just want to you know he just use a safety suite on her and i think he's sweet on her <laughs> so do you have anything else you want to share for this little um quick update no i hope <laughs> Kaser wins veto. Me too. Putting it out there into the universe. Yeah. Please. Please. Please be something. And also I want them to bring in another twist or whatever. Like they kind of tease that there's going to be so many twists and, you know, things happening and nothing has happened. I know. Yeah. I don't know. Are they just giving them like a week off or, but I'm like, this is all stars. I feel like it's been a relatively boring, like the safety suite I think was relatively boring except for the first week, like right. the second and third week, regardless of who won it, neither of those four people were going to be in trouble anyway. Absolutely. And so who cares? Like, it was just a big, like, so yeah, who so cares? I think that was a swap of a twist anyway. So I would have thrown something in like right after to make, to make up for it, but they're just. Oh, I don't know if you saw this conversation. Um, I don't know remember when it happened, but David, I believe was talking to Kaser mm -hmm. and telling him like, Oh, like I think that Janelle played it really wrong. Like nobody was no. coming for her. Like what? Like she she acted like she was a target, which just made her a target. And I was just like, I and the, oh, what was the one I sent you yesterday? He, oh, he was talking with um, Kevin and Ian, and he was they were like talking about potential like America getting involved, like fan favorite um, thing or whatever. And I think David was kind of like hinting at like maybe he'll be the next one because he was like, oh well. Who would uh, all Janelle's followers like go to next? And then <laughs> Kevin and Ian were like, Kaser. And he's like, <laughs> Really? Like, you think so? And they're like, Yes, Kaser. And he was like, And then he said something else like later too. They're like, like Or he said something else. Um, and they were like, Kaser. <laughs> I was like, oh, He really has never seen the show. Like, he I, I officially believe 
<laughs> like, you know what? He, it's kind of like he's playing basketball with like a super legend, but he's never seen the super legend play before. And then he just thinks that like he could just talk down. Like, like he's playing like with Michael Jordan and Michael Jordan is retired, but he's never seen Michael Jordan play. But he's heard of him now that he's playing in like a new Chicago Bulls. I don't know if I have all the teams right, but you know, like he's yeah, a sure. new a new player on this team and he's heard of maybe Chicago Bulls and they're having like, oh, an, an all old school. Cool Chicago Bulls player come back and he's might have heard that for this person before but he's never seen him play and so then he's giving him tips on how to play <laughs> and then assuming that you know the fans would support him over like Michael Jordan or whatever I mean yeah or like the number one person associated with Janelle like exactly what, like what's the next next best bet exactly case? then e after that Bailey like come on exactly and after Bailey Ian <laughs> right and then um, after Ian Davon like you're not even near that chain <laughs> someone, someone else said someone else was like I feel like David the type of person that you say good morning to him and you just start talking about the Pythagorean theorem or something and I was like <laughs> possibly Every time I see him on the feeds, I'm just like, oh, God, do I, like, click on his? Or uh -uh. I get confused just listening to his conversations. He just doesn't know what he is. I don't think he actually – I think he's trying to act smart, like, and doesn't really know what he's trying to say. So, like, he just says stuff, and it doesn't really have a real intention or motive or understands why he's saying it. He's just saying things. I don't know. He's confusing to me. I'm I'm done with him. I, yeah. I mean, I want this week to Kaser to stay. Obviously, I think that it's like a ten percent chance that he stays. Um, regardless of, it's just very slim unless he wins the veto. And if he doesn't win the veto, like even less of a chance if he stays. So annoying. So, anything can happen until Thursday. So anything can happen. Please have. Where's like a where's that halting hex? <laughs> Something. I don't know what that means, but yes. Oh, uh, you didn't watch last, or two seasons ago? Ball season, where like Jessica oh, got like oh, the halting okay, ass. Okay. So I can't remember what happened with it, but she got to like I thought, stop. I thought you were talking about tarot card or something. <laughs> no. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, well, Lost that's it. all I really got for right now. Do you have any last things to chat about? Not really. I'm excited to see what they show on Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. We'll see. We will see. Baby so where Zell. can people find you if they're looking for you online? Um, at Babyzill on Instagram. Coolio. And if you're looking for me, I'm all over the place. If you go to at ShanFranFran on Instagram, there's a link in the bio and it has everywhere where you can find me. Um, you can also find me at Reality and Realness with three S's on Instagram and Reality and Realness with three S's but no second E on Twitter and at Shan underscore 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 Fran on Twitter. Just do it. Find us. Comment. Tell us what you're thinking about this season. Are you as frustrated as we are? What do you hope will happen? Do you think CBS will step in and do something to save this city? This city. This season. <laughs> save the city. Oh, man. Save the city. <laughs> Please. Please. Save Kaser. We need to start a campaign. Save Kaser. Give an audience of the audience a vote. Make us head of household. Oh. Do something. Ooh. Please. So, yeah, okay, the last thing someone someone tweeted like I love how the BB um, super fans made themselves the 17 house guests this season. Keep going, y'all. I'm trying, <laughs> trying, <laughs> trying. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.